joining us now for a look at a company called DeLorean is Joe Oliver, the Managing Director. Joe, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us, Peter. Really appreciate it. Uh, now, this is a, an information video just to explain to people what your company does. Um, so why don't you walk us through the main parts of your business? Yeah, so, um, so, so look, first off, thanks for letting me unpack the business. DeLorean Corporation is a group of um, four entities that is focused on the bioenergy domain. And bioenergy is in the form of um, uh, biogas and diverting organic waste from uh, landfill for power production and also green gas and effectively hydrogen in the future as well. So tell us how the technology actually works in converting uh, this organic waste into energy. Yeah, so it's a biological breakdown. So anaerobic digestion is um, a biological breakdown of volatile matter for methane production. So methanogens break that volatile matter down, gives us methane in the form of biogas, which is 60% uh, CH4 and 40% CO2. So what we're able to do is we're able to split that 60 and 40, capture the 40% CO2 for upgrading for food grade, um, CO2 carbonizing drinks, etc. And then the methane, we're able to upgrade the methane and put into the, the grid to offset fossil fuel, uh, natural gas, CNG, LNG. And equally, we can split that into hydrogen as well. Okay, so tell us about the projects that you've got in the pipeline right now. So we've got um, two projects that are shovel ready. Um, one's reached FID in the last, uh, last couple of weeks, and that's in Victoria. That's processing... Um, organic waste diversion from landfill again, quite a rural area, um, and he's, and he's uh, moving into construction in July. It'll take 12 months to build and 15 months before it's fully operating at 100%. Another project that we've got is in South Australia, um, which is moving through to FID um, and will be one of the first facilities upgrading biogas to biomethane from commercial food waste that will be uh, diverted from landfill in the area. Mm. It's, it's interesting, as, as I'm listening to you, I um, recall many years ago when I was um, writing for the Australian newspaper, I did a story on a guy called Don Erskine from Bendigo, who was uh, having a battle with one of the big uh, brick makers, because he was making bricks in Bendigo, uh, and they were trying to price him out of the market. And he was actually set up beside the old tip and he was actually accessing methane to power the kilns. And uh, yeah. that was probably 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah, look, I think there's a lot of interest in, in that green gas space as well. So, you know, um, we're seeing a huge volume of interest around um, meeting sustainability requirements from a gas perspective um, that can't be currently achieved. So in terms of energy from electricity, obviously there's, you know, there's hundreds and thousands of megawatts of um, solar, wind, hydro, but what there isn't is green gas. So being able to roll out a green gas strategy that assists with the likes of um, your brick makers through to um, Wolfscar and other other manufacturing um, requirements that that consume a huge volume of gas is really about meeting that sustainability requirement that's being forced upon um, you know a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of companies. Uh, Joe, do, do we see this as being yeah. something that gets fed into the grid to build up the overall power, uh, or uh, or maybe and or can individual um, projects um, actually put a, uh, a green gas um, facility beside a, a production facility? Yeah, so it, it's definitely an end. Um, we've got uh, facilities that are doing both and it's about being commercially viable. So our, all our facilities are built upon the commercials and where we can see the best uh, return. What we are seeing is there's a huge um, interest as we move into green gas and that becomes uh, more favorable. Uh, and these facilities are generating green gas. So we're able to uh, upgrade that gas and uh, get the best highest value for, for, for the gas. How are the projects uh, financed? 
So we um, were able to finance the, the projects through um, a couple of uh, facilities that we have um, from asset finance, project finance, and corporate finance. And we've seen um, LVRs in that sort of 50% during the construction phase, and then higher LVRs as we move into the operation phase. So that 12 months is uh, is covered from a from a construction um, finance, and then moved into an operational finance. So. Tell, tell us about the economics in terms of what you get back. Yeah, so um, so all of our facilities range between 10% to 25, 30% IRRs. Um, and that's about um, processing gate fee um, food waste or organic waste that's diverted from the market um, and generating energy and with additional value. So our main focus is the diversion of waste, so getting paid for our fuel, basically, that then um, supplies our green gas and, and, and others. There's other revenue streams such as digestate, um, so the nutrients that comes out the back end, growing crops, um, uh, really being able to harness all of the, the, the byproducts that are coming off this facility, CO2, heat, power, um, and diversion of uh, landfill for gate fees. Can you talk to us about the key people involved, including yourself and the experience? Yeah, so my, my background, I've been in um, the anaerobic digestion industry for over 15 years uh, now. Um, uh, the co-founder, Hamish Jolly, uh, as well, um, strong background in tech, but also finance and corporate um, uh, commercial. The rest of the team is structured from a construction and energy retail um, and the development. So all specializing in that field to, to bring that vertical integrated pipeline of projects that we've got together that um, we develop, we construct, and then we retail the energy as well. So that one-stop shop for, for bioenergy projects being a, able to be delivered in-house under one roof. So you, you recently listed on the ASX and you raised about $14 million. What will the funds allow the company to do? So the funds are being um, deployed into projects. So, um, so we we capitalised the organisation to deliver our pipeline of projects to give the return um, back and, and continue to build out our national footprint of of uh, bioenergy projects. Um, so that's where the funds have been uh, have been have been used, and we've mixed that with um, some leverage from a, a debt finance to to get the best um, output for the company from a um, building more facilities perspective. How long has the company uh, been in place for? So the company originated from Biogas Renewables about eight years ago, and we grew out the um, the, the company from Clean Tech Energy, our energy retailer, and DeLorean Energy, our, our developer, um, uh, to to fit under the DeLorean Corporation banner um, over the past eight years. Right. So as an individual so, unit, what's profitability like at this stage? So um, looking. Back at um, previous years and everything that we've highlighted in the prospectus, obviously, um, we've got a turnover of about 30 million um, revenue with about a 10% EBITDA. So about the 3.6 mil was generated in FY20, and we're on for the same um, EBITDA this year as well, after we've invested into the wider group from the project pipeline and delivery into uh, in, into the key areas of, of, of focus for us. Yeah, C considering the, the time you've been in this space, uh, have you ever seen a time when both business and government seem far more receptive to what you guys are doing? Well, this is the perfect time. We're starting to see an a, a energy roadmap that will be um, brought out in the next um, four to six weeks that will really carve out a path for green gas. Um, there's a lot of interest. I think COVID has assisted around that ESG element of, you know, we need to be sustainable, we need to be renewable, and we need to be um, focused in that space. So, so we're really seeing a strong commitment both from government and from um, private organisations to deliver um, a, a sustainable outcome. And, and, and DeLorean uh, assists with uh, with that from an energy perspective. Okay. So finally, you know. What are the key focuses and catalysts going to be for the company for the rest of the year? 
So we're we're um, we're aligned to the prospectus. We're probably ahead of the prospectus in terms of um, uh, pulling back the Diseo project to 100% ownership, in addition to reaching FID on, on Delorean Energy Victoria One. Um, we're rolling out the project pipeline, um, completing development on a further uh, two projects, and um, and uh, 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 and. Uh, generating more leads in the energy retail business. So, key focus is to um, is to increase revenue, um, deliver a wider pipeline of projects, and uh, and and deliver on on the perspectives that we've uh, that we've set out. Okay. Well, you're certainly in the right space, Joe. We wish you a lot of luck, and we look we'll look forward to tracking your performance you know, in future months. Really appreciate the uh, the time, Peter, and, and thank you for 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 the questions. Cheers, mate.